So when you very first go through the divorce procedure, you start and everything's quite scary and very, very unnerving because all of a sudden your life has completely changed. Um, I'm here to ensure that everything with to do with the finances and your protection runs fairly smoothly. I can't promise it'll run 100% smoothly, but you know I will do my best to make sure it runs very, very smoothly with you. If you complete the budget planner, and we can talk through every single penny that goes out of your account so that you know that we've not missed anything. We then work out how much you can afford, what and what really, realistically, what it is that you want. So do you want to have life insurance? Do you want to have income protection? Do you want to buy your own home? Would you prefer to rent? And that's something that you and I have a conversation about. You know, preferably we meet for coffee. Preferably it's not done in an office environment because that's probably even worse. I can do it over the telephone. Whatever is easiest for you, we will do, but I will hold your hand from start to finish and the advice you get would always be the best of my ability to make sure that you get what you need rather than your ex or your family or anybody else gets what they need. It's all about you as a person, not about you as a finance. My name's Sheila Bailey, I'm from Willow Private Finance. We help people to buy new homes, move house, remortgage to save money, get their protection sorted, anything to do with finance. So when you're getting divorced, everybody assumes that you have to sell the house and you have to kind of split up and do, do take whatever you can out of the property. That's not necessarily always the right way to do it. There are a number of ways that you can proceed. So the partner that's staying in the home could possibly buy out the ex-partner. Uh, if there's children involved, you may not have to pay the ex-partner their equity in the house until the children get to a certain age. Uh, you have things like, do you have pensions? Can that be used as the equity instead of the house? Can you sell and both buy? So that you've got slightly smaller houses each, but somewhere for all the you know the children to go to. Is it better actually for you to sell and both rent? These, there's there's so many different variations of doing things. Do you stay living in the same house because it's big enough? Will your mortgage lender allow you to put in a second kitchen? So actually, you can have two separate kitchens, two separate bathrooms, but still live at the same address. There are a number of different ways that you can actually progress, even though you're getting divorced, and still be nice to each other <laughs> and still do it amicably you know if you don't you know the best thing to do is talk to me tell me what you need or what you would desire and then we'll work out whether or not that is possible to do it at the beginning of a, of a divorce you should always do a budget planner so you should always sit down and go through your bank statements and work out exactly what you pay for now and then with a financial advisor or, or a, it doesn't matter who, but you need to work out which of those you will need to continue going forward. So your own life insurance and your own critical illness or your own income protection. But if you start with a budget planner and you write it from your statements, you know exactly what you're paying out for now. So things like car lease. So, you know, you pay for car finance. Well, is that you that's going to continue paying it or is it your ex? Whose car is it? So you just need to work everything out from the beginning. And if you've got a budget planner, then it really does help when you're sitting down talking about finances and, and when you go through the conversations with either a mediator or a solicitor. With regards to taking insurance out on your ex-partner or whether your ex-partner takes uh, insurance out on yourself, for example, if you're a, a mum and you want to take insurance out on the dad to ensure that if they pass away that you've still got the maintenance money coming in, even if it is as a lump sum, you are able to do that, but the person that you are taking the insurance out of also has to agree that you are able to take that policy out on their life because it will make a difference for when they wish to take out their own policy if they remarry or something like that. So it needs to be fairly amicable for you, for you both to agree that. You can pay their premiums, but the, the most important thing is, is probably for the dad to take out an insurance on a mum if the children are staying with the, with the mother, because if the mother passes away, the father's got no one to look after those children. So you then have to kind of work a budget between the two of you, how you look after those children if the mum, if she's a stay at home mum, or even if she's a work from home mum, or a working mum, you still need to have somebody to look after those children should she pass away. 
Now they say that the um, average cost of a parent, a mother that stays at home, is actually £32,000 a year. So they don't necessarily go out and earn themselves an income, but it could cost you £32,000 a year for, for you to have to replace that parent as, as a you know a daily you know washing, cooking, ironing, taking the kids to school, the general things. But could you, you as a single parent now with no with no other parent there to support you, could you afford thirty two thousand pound a year to pay somebody else to do that for you? So that's something you, you have to have the whole discussion about whether or not it's an affordable option for you to take an insurance on each other, or whether or not you have a separate insurance that's purely for the children. So for example, if the mum or dad pass away that they've got 100 to 150 or 200 whatever it is that you need thousand pounds worth of cover that is purely to support the children if you are not there on top of any other insurances you've got to cover your own mortgage and would that normally go into a trust you can set it up in trust so you can set it up in trust for the children or for an executor of a will or for the other parent um, that would be a discussion that you need to have as to where you want the money to go for example would you trust your ex-husband with £200,000 worth of money to actually support the children? Some will, because some will get on really well with their ex-husbands and other or ex-wives, but others won't. So it's a conversation you can't, we, we need to have to make sure who gets that money. From a personal point of view, my mum gets my money and my children are safe. So I know that my ex-husband doesn't get that money. So, But there are other people I know who have it that their ex-husband gets their money. So it is just personal preference and how well you get on with your ex-husband or wife.